It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, today I got Ed and Sean. They just started a new company called Predictive Insight. And Ed, I got to be honest with you. I thought you moved down there in the South to retire and play golf. What the hell are you doing starting a new company? And Sean, great to see you. You got a great partner. But what, Ed, what are you doing, Ed? Well, let me tell you something. Never mind about that retiring stuff. My, uh, my retirement party and my wake are the exact same day. So you can attend my funeral and my retirement party collectively. Well, I hope that uh, you live a long, long time because we're not ready for that. And the industry well, damn sure isn't ready. ready to quit either. Well, <clears throat> well, Sean, I got to be honest with you. You got a great partner. I mean, a guy's been around the industry forever. He knows everything about it. He knows where all the cobwebs are. And he knows how to take something that's from a concept to actually delivering it into the marketplace. I think you guys are going to do really good. But I got to ask a question. I mean, you know, when you look at the surface of this, you guys have a DCA tool. Everybody in the world would be saying, what the hell do we need another DCA tool? So can you explain to us a little bit about what your business is and where you all, you know, where the history of it comes from? Because I know the product's been around for about 20 years, I think. So, you know, I don't, who wants to start? Sean, you know, what's going on? What are you guys doing? Well, what we've done is uh, we've partnered with a company called EKM Global, which has a product called Insight. And this software was built from the ground up from a consulting standpoint. So I've used all the different DCAs that are out there. Uh, and this one is by far so far ahead of everything, uh, all the other DC, uh, DCAs. Um, I, I couldn't pass it up. Well, I got to be honest with you, Ed, the one thing that I noticed, so tell me if I'm right, is that the way it collects the data, because it doesn't throw like a fire hose of water at you, it just kind of tells you what you need to know and it ships it out quicker, which takes a whole lot less time, which should speed up the processes involved, especially with our friends in the imaging channel that are trying to get data on thousands of machines for like meter reading purposes. Well, not only does it make it faster, faster isn't really the, the idea of it. The idea is to give you the information that you need. Mm -hmm. if, if the, we're sitting in a world right now that's just, we're overloaded with data. We get data coming at us from all angles. Mm -hmm. And we've got a business to run. You can't be analyzing every single thing. So it gets, gets you what you need to get the job done at the time and gets you the, the important information and it's prioritized in a way that enables you to run your business better. So. The analytics are in there to determine whether you're going to need supplies, when you're going to need supplies. It's checking the meters for your billing purposes. It's it's not going to lose the meter because we use a store and forward mechanism over a secure port. The same port that the military uses to communicate with ships and airport and, and aircraft. So we're better secure, we're faster, and we don't create a load. That's really the most important part. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create a load on the network uh, and, and slow everything else down. And actually, in some cases, DCAs have been known to stop uh, copy jobs when they're in the process because they go take a reading in the middle of a job, overload the network, and shut the copier down. That would be a good thing. <laughs> That would not be a good thing. Let me ask you a question. So you have some AI built into this too. So, you know, it seems to me that the older style DCAs are going to collect information and just send it to you. Where your DCA tool seems like it predicts stuff or, you know, to explain a little bit about that and that difference. First of all, I'm going to let Sean really explain more about that. But I will tell you that, and you know this to be true, I've been talking about predictive maintenance and predictive analytics when it comes to running the back office for a long time. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I've never seen a tool better than this. Up to 90 days out, we're beginning to monitor parts consumption, whether fuses are going bad. You begin to schedule your appointments. You begin to schedule calls. In addition to that, we're also working with NextEra. So mm -hmm. as they integrate, we're going to go deeper. We'll actually be able to determine whether the technician has the part in his trunk and whether we can schedule things the right way. We're going to continue to develop, and that I think is a difference too. We're going to continue to develop the way that we deliver this to make it more effective and better and better as we go on. EKM has got the, the most customizable system that I've ever seen. And quite frankly, we can measure part supplies for replenishment down to the day. So, and, and we don't duplicate the, the orders too, which is another problem some people run into from time to time. That's a 30,000 foot view. I'll let Sean give you a little well, bit that's, closer. 
Love it's that. well, you know, when you mention Nextera, obviously we're good friends with Nextera, and Nextera has the way to help a dealer manage some disciplines needed to be more efficient. But it sounds like packaging those, you know, his software with your software, that could be kind of a big home run too for a lot of dealers. Uh, it's, it, it changes the world. Yeah, that's it, pretty it's awesome. Major. Absolutely. So do you, do you does this work with any does any manufacturers use your da- your data for instance in their direct operations yet or you know is EKM obviously they're we're only we we've, we've only started since since June first so give us a little bit of time. Uh, I thought but, you were uh, like the best sales guy in the world, Ed. Come on, man! It's been like I am. ninety days. I am. I'm actually uh, I'm really not a very good salesman. I just can identify what good things are. All right, and, buddy. Uh, I'll let the people buy it from me. I don't try to sell anybody anything. There you go. But uh, HP and EKM have been very closely tied, and John can probably elaborate more about that. He saw some of the history develop over time. Right. So HP came to us uh, quite a while ago uh, with the idea of SDS, uh, Smart Device Services. Mm-hmm. And so what we were able to do most of the stuff, I would say about 80% of the stuff that they were looking to have done in the system was uh, already part of the EKM system. So it was just getting it to communicate with the HP uh, uh, servers and database. So one of the beautiful things about the software is the fact that it's cleansed right from the very beginning. So on the DCA level, the information is cleansed. So if you see spikes or something, Mm -hmm. anomalies that don't make a whole lot of sense, Rather than sending that in as an issue, it'll wait until it validates that it's an issue and not an anomaly. And then it goes up to the cloud, and again, it is it is cleansed as well and looked at with the uh, with the algorithms that are tied in. So the whole concept is that uh, that the software can run, and a per- one person can manage ten thousand devices in less than eight hours. And that's where they started at with their consultancy. So let me ask you a question on that. If I'm a if I'm a dealer and I have you know a hundred thousand devices, I'm a big dealer. I have a hundred thousand devices, and I'm using an old style DSA tool. You know that could take me how how what's the well? I think Ed, you told me one time it, the you know it's about three thousand devices per worker. Normally speaking, normally speaking, you need one person, one back office person for every three thousand devices. Now, there's people that will debate that and say they're doing better than that. They're doing 5,000. One person once told me they were doing 7,000, but it turned out that they forgot some systems that they weren't counting into that. So whether it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, we're going to buy better that substantially, Mm -hmm. one person for every 10,000 devices. Well, plus you're giving better information and you're, you're giving the information filtered a whole lot better. Let me well, ask... Not only that, we're doing the heavy lifting. We're, we're helping them. All the things that people are doing is you need people taking that data, slicing and dicing the data that they're getting from the CCAs mm-hmm. to find out what they really need out of that and, and whether it's going to be useful. So they're actually working with the data after they collect it. We're giving them the answers. They don't have to go dig for the answers and build them We've already done that for them. We've done all the lifting that they needed to do. All they need to do is apply the data, apply the knowledge that we give them, because that's what predictive analytics is about. It's taking the information that you need to make the decision and help you do it, as opposed to giving you all this stuff, lines and lines and lines of proof. It takes forever to get through it. You're busy running a business. You don't have time to do that kind of stuff. You've got to get to the point. And I remember when I ran this, well, I'm still the same way. If people start wandering off and elaborating before they get there, I'll say, get to the point. Mm-hmm. Because you need to get there first. And yeah. that's what's so critical about the back office administration so that you can get things done quickly. Let me ask you a question, Sean, real quick. And, uh, you know, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but no can, I, can I decide what data I want? Is it customizable? So I'm getting all these fields. Can I come to you and say, hey, I'd like to know this. Well, what you're able to do is through the report system is you're able to bring in the information that you want you, that you truly want to see based on how your dealership is ran. Okay. So uh, one of the beautiful things about the way that the EKM uh, company works and so far with the customers that we picked up in the United States, they'll all tell you that, you know, one, one of the challenges of using European software is, is, is that translation from what happens in the UK to what happens in, uh, in the United States. Anytime that we need to pivot or that do something differently, 
that's done in days rather than in, in months and years. Wow. Well, I got to be honest with you, Ed, you know, the industry obviously going through some pretty, pretty challenging times right now. And, you know, we've all decided we're not going back to 100 percent of where the volume was. And one of the things that we absolutely have to do, we've talked about this before on the end of the day with Ray, is control our cost. It sounds to me like you have an ability to control some costs. You have some ability to really get some analytics and be proactive in how we do service and how we even supply parts to techs. And partnered up with our friends over at Next Era, man, this is really exciting stuff. I can't wait to see it evolve and grow through the through the channel. I wish you guys the best of best of luck, obviously. And you know, I got to be honest with you. So you guys are together. So who's the boss? There is no boss. Do you flip a we're coin? Together. Do you flip a coin if you have a disagreement? No, we uh, we're too far apart to have a boxing match. There you go. All right. I, I, I tell you, one of the amazing things is we have been so aligned ever since we first started discussing archery that every time we sit there and say, hey, I'm thinking about this, and Ed goes, yeah, that's perfect. That's what I was thinking about. And I'm saying surprise, surprise, and vice versa. I, I think, you know, Ed's, Ed's a leader, and he's got a little bit uh, more miles than I do, but uh, uh, he, he always knows the direction to go. And, and i got to be honest, if it comes down to uh, where we disagree, I'm probably going to defer to Ed rather than uh, get into a fist fight over it. Yeah, make him fight a little bit. I actually did a calculation recently how long I've been in this business, and it scared the living hell out of me. There's people working in this business uh, that aren't as old as the Lord. I, I started in this industry in 1969. How the hell did I last this long? I mean, I... That's kind of amazing, actually. I'm thinking, hell, back in 1969, what were we getting data on? Oh, that typewriter ribbon's about ready to run out. Uh, it, what's funny, <laughs> well, when I started in the business, I started in the computer industry with Univac yeah. in 1969. So, uh, a lot of changes, Ed, that's for damn sure. A lot of, cha- boy, a lot of changes over this period of time. Uh, the whole idea of, uh, of, of Siri or talking into the computer was mm-hmm. just sort of fantasy world at that time. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were key punches and putting stuff in with interpreting cards and things of that nature. So Lots of changes. A lot of exciting times ahead for those that seek excitement. You know what, guys? I wish you the best of luck. And, you know, anything you want to wrap this up with? Yeah, I think I started uh, kindergarten in 1969. Yeah, uh, (laughs) pretty much. Well, I would tell you, don't get stuck in status quo. The older stuff is really, it's, 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 it's fading out. Get well, hold of the new technology and use the use what's available to help run your business. We used to be focused on putting razors out there so that they use the blades. Yep. But that razor is going to slow down. There's no stopping mm-hmm. it. It's over. And we have to get focused on transitioning from a transactional business to a services-based business. Yep. There's no other way to do it than be focused on your customer, be customer-centric, and we'll help you with the tools to get there. And there's and nothing the better than data. That is we can guarantee an immediate ROI uh, for Absolutely. a switchover right from day, uh, from uh, probably day 30. Well, we'll put a link to how they can get a hold of you. I guess everybody knows Ed. Sean, they're going to learn who you are real quick. I mean, you know, I, I think hanging around Ed, good exposure. My Absolutely. friends, I'm going to end this the way I always do, and you heard it from Ed first. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck oh, in status quo. I'll see you all tomorrow.